So there is a big difference between the backswing of a pitch shot and a full swing. And I think sometimes as coaches, to keep it simple, we don't tell you the difference. And this could be the reason why you're really good at pitching and can't hit a driver, or unfortunately are pretty good with the full swing and can't hit pitches. We're gonna use two sticks, your wedge. It's actually simpler than it you would think. So I pulled Megan in, and Megan is a really good example because as a drawer of the golf ball, and you are really good at hitting draws with your pull shot, it means your normal backswing doesn't really suit your pitching. Yeah, so, definitely. although I said we need two sticks, we're actually doing two separate drills, so you could actually get away with having one. But Megan, if you could just set up for me. So what I'm trying to do, and this doesn't have to be precise, but we're gonna try and match up the shaft angle with the shaft angle in Megan's club. This is really, really important because Megan is now going to try and have the head track up here. So I want Megan to watch it and kind of see it's a far more upward movement. So with pitching, pitching we go steep to shallow. So we want to work up more. We don't want extension in the arms. Can you just show your normal backswing? Can you see you end up whacking it? Yeah. So yes, there's going to be a few differences in the face, and we'll talk about that in another video. But feeling that it works up more, really important. So I want to feel it going up this stick, not out towards it. Yeah. I'd say definitely with my draw motion, I would tend to drop it down in yeah. too. So feeling like it's staying above that stick on both sides. Yeah. And uh, the question I get a lot is how far should I stand away from it? Um, as you get more confident, you can use it as more of a, um, just some, something as reference, so I'll stand further away. So if you were to stand over there, you see you can use it for reference. Um, if you want to use it for feedback, I'm gonna stand a bit closer, but don't stand too close, because if you stand too close, you can get around it and uh, cheat a little bit. So, really simple. You'll notice how I haven't hit shots doing this. You know, I think, too often like we've got a beautiful short game area here so it makes sense to get your balls out and start hitting away but just spend five minutes getting a sense of what you're meant to be doing and then you can take it and start applying it so this is drill one drill two is to confirm you haven't cheated not that any of you people watching would try and do such so the second drill so Megan if you set up for me I'm going to put the club, so it's like parallel with the feet. It's kind of in between the feet and the club. When you take the club back, your club head shouldn't come in side and the hands shouldn't come outside. Uh, the way I like to think about it is um, they have to work together, but they've had a fallout and they don't like talking anymore. So they both have to be present and they both have to do work but they don't like talking to each other that's the move or the one I see a lot so imagine when we had the other stick here it's easy just to pull everything out you see you pull everything out that makes it look very different but then you have to then do something very rapid in the downswing to make up for it so we don't want a situation where the hands are working excessively out all we see a lot of the time, so if you do like your draw move, Megan, you see that the club head starts coming inside. So if the club has come inside, that tends to cause us the trouble as well. So sometimes we get a real nice sensation that we need to go up and then when it's removed, it whips inside. That is the death move, isn't it? Show, show the death move. That one there, the club head has gone way out. You see it's so far away from you in terms of the target. So even if you get that back to the ball, you have to move really fast. So then you get a situation, if I commit to it, the ball goes too far. If I don't commit to it, I can't hit it. 
neither work. Yeah. So these are the two drills. I haven't hit balls in this one either. Like I said, this is, for me, if you spend five minutes thinking about this, you can then create a feeling to apply. If you don't do this, the likelihood is you will just start getting more technical and technical, technical as you hit more and more balls because you're actually getting lost because the stuff that makes you good in one element of the game is actually hindering you here. So take the time, get a sensation, and then do a little practice and I think you can take over and start pitching really, really well. So thank you for demonstrating, Megan. Get some comments down below. Are you the person, so we got the two different people, great with driver, can't pitch, or great with pitching, can't drive? Maybe it's because you're using the same motion and what makes you good at one hinders the other. So get those comments down below, like and subscribe, and I hope to catch you soon.